Bethel, Alaska. It is a bustling regional center for more than 50 small villages on the vast Yukon-Kuskokwim Delta in southwest Alaska. For thousands of years, the people of the Delta have lived close to the land. To the Yupik and Chupik Eskimos, furs are an important part of their culture, traditions, and ceremony. To those living in the north, furs bring warmth and beauty. Many fur animals make their home here, but the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta is best known for Imagamiutak, the mink. Each year in early winter, village trappers across the delta head out on their mink lines. Daluyat are traditional basket traps set for blackfish and mink. Traditionally, they were made with willow and spruce. Today, they may be made with wire. Village trappers have learned to blend old ways with new. Daluyat are put in small tundra sloughs beneath the ice where the mink like to travel, looking for blackfish to eat. It is cold, hard work. As it has for centuries, the land provides. Meat from these mink will be eaten. Two mink and two traps. The pelts will be cared for. Some will be used at home, others will be sold. Each check of the taluyak provides food, income, and renewed ties to the land. A chupik mink trapper from the village of Chivak talks about his life as a hunter and trapper. Each December, you pick Chupik and others gather at the annual mink festival in Bethel to celebrate. It is time for old friends to meet once again and to celebrate the fur animals so important to the people and culture of the Delta. Furs and handcrafted fur items are traded and sold at the festival, trappers learn tips on skinning and pelt care so their furs are of the highest quality. Pelts from the Delta's best trappers are displayed for judging 
and prizes. Skin sewers work their magic, turning furs into mitts, hats, and beautiful parkas. These young trappers sell their first fox pelts to a visiting fur buyer. Can we look at yours now? I gotta see that silver fox. Or I mean that cross fox. With a sense of pride, Delta trappers are passing on the tradition of trapping go, to others as it was passed to them. Well, for as long as I can remember, my father's been trapping, my grandfather's been trapping, and we've been trapping the same trap line for as long as I can remember. My grandpa taught my dad the trap line. And my dad taught me, is teaching me the trap line right now for mink. There's not very many jobs available in the village, so this is just something to do, get out of the house, make a little extra money on the side. It's just something to pass down to your kids, I guess. I'll be teaching the trap line to my son as soon as he's old enough, if he's willing to learn. I enjoy trapping. I've been on this uh, trapping for quite a while, since I was about 18 years old. Yeah, sometimes I do good, sometimes poor. But the price is still going down. I don't know why. Everything else is going up and the price of the mink is pretty low this year. Uh, it was pretty hard for me. When I first, uh, when my stepfather first taught me how to do the trapping, but when you once you get used to it, it's like nothing. To me, I like it because uh, I, I, I just don't like to stay in the house and do nothing. I like to have something to go out and check my traps. Sometimes it's over 100 miles of trap line, and sometimes it's less. Me, I never slow down. I love to trap and hunt. People living close to the land carry on the traditions with proper respect for the animals. By following traditional ways, furs remain an important part of life on the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta. I was born to be a trapper. Far to the north, the Yukon River winds its way through the subarctic forests of Alaska's interior. The Yukon River Valley was a travel route for North America's first people. Explorers, fur traders, and gold seekers also followed the Yukon River. Long winters and extreme cold produce furs of unsurpassed quality. Furs have been an important part of life here for centuries. Each winter, village trappers head out on family trap lines handed down across generations. Today, most trappers use snow machines to travel in winter. Some also use dog teams. Working dog teams are a common sight in many villages. Today in the interior, more than 30 villages are located along the banks of the Yukon River and its tributaries. In the village of Huslia, jobs are few. Most families rely heavily on the land to meet basic needs 
and trapping has been an important part of their lives for generations. When I grew up, everybody, there was no job. Everybody around here really depend on trapping. That's the way everybody meet living. And I think that went on all the way up to, and the 60 he got in. Mm -hmm. Then they started to be work, you know, kids got to go to school and all that. So you got to have a job then. But all before that, everything was all trapping. Everybody pretty much meet their living with all trapping. I'm going on 72 now, and I've been trapping ever since I remember, really. I still remember the first uh, mink I caught. I didn't set the trap. I was trying to, but my, my father helped me to set that trap. About two days later, I guess we went to go around the same place. And there was a mink in there. Boy, I caught that one mink and uh, he took care of it. He skinned it and cleaned it and everything. But in the evening, I was talking about how much stuff I was going to buy. <laughs> I was rich. <laughs> I guess that was my beginning part of trapping. We have pretty big trap lines, so I kind of trap one side one year, another side another year, and kind of move along like that. I do the same thing with beaver. I trap beaver all my life, <clears throat> and beaver we just take one or two out of the house and that's it. And uh, we don't trap them next year, we trap another ones. That way, it, uh, there's always beaver. Yeah, it's always there. I guess the trapping is really stuck in me, I guess. I'm funny, you know? When I go out and I see my trap line, I see the country out there, I really feel good, really. <clears throat> That's what mostly I go out for, really, right now. Many of the furs are sold to provide income to families in the villages. Some furs are kept for home use to make warm hats, mitts, and other clothing items needed to live and work in temperatures that reach 60 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. We trapped this ourselves, and uh, then I made it into parka. That's when uh, muskrat was a tie, but we were trapping muskrat to eat and hunting it in the spring, and he was working. So at the time, what few muskrat we were catching, we didn't sell it because I can make use of it. And so, like I say, we don't only trap for uh, money. That's not the whole meanings of trapping is money, but it's uh, to keep up the traditional and to keep your, uh, like Stephen's parents' trap line, he went out yesterday and it made him so good feel it make him feel so good to think back about his parents, where his daddy used to trap, where his mom set fish trap, all those things, good memories. I really suffer for camp, even though I didn't stay in camp as much as him. But uh, that's, that's the whole life. And if there's no trapping, then uh, what people is going to do? 350 miles east of Huslia, in the upper Yukon village of Circle, people also rely on the land. Well, when you're living out in the woods, you know, there's always things you need that you can get a lot from the land, but you've always got to buy certain things. You've got to have fuel or tools and stuff like that, and uh, there's hardly any thing you can do and still maintain that lifestyle of being out in the woods without having to go get a job. There's not a lot of things that will bring in money for you. And trapping is one of the very few things that there are that you can be out there doing what you enjoy doing, living off the land and also catching this fur that will supply you with some hard, much needed cash at the same time. It may not always be a lot of money, but for the lifestyle that you live, it's enough to get you these things that are real important to you. And to myself, it's what 
has always uh, sustained us. It's been that extra money that's got us through the summers and everything else and provided us with things we couldn't get ourselves. And I think that's the same with all the villages and uh, most of the people that are living out in the bush, they depend a lot on trapping for that extra income. Like spring and summer, you're getting ready or you're fishing, and then in the fall, you're hunting, and come wintertime, you're going out and trapping, and all these seasons are real important. You can't miss any of them, actually, because they all provide for you, and uh, it all ties in together. It just seems like it's something that you have to do to live this lifestyle. It's very important. Uh, another thing that we do around here a lot, and you see in a lot of communities, sometimes there's a lot of older people that can't get out and trap or do stuff, but they still crave this wild game meat and stuff, things like beaver and muskrats. And I always make it a point whenever I have any extra, whether it's moose meat or beaver or lynx, a lot of people really like lynx meat. And I'll always try to distribute or give away and share with my neighbors and other villagers. It's a very important part of it. Alaska's subarctic interior is fur country. Trapping has been vital to the culture of the people. For those living here, it is a practical use of the abundance of furs, a use that fills social as well as economic needs. Through trapping, traditional skills and ways of living are carried on. I used to feel uh, so bad when I start hearing about uh, subsistent stuff, you know, subsistent hunting, trapping, everything. Oh my, I used to worry. It just make me sick. And uh, without those things, uh, it just suffer people more. Like him and I were, were okay, you know, kind of well do. We raise our kids and just just two of us now, and we got everything we need. Yet we gotta have that trap. It. It's our life, and it's it's the people that need it. Like this fall, he trade with gas for all his Martin. And without that Martin, you know, he couldn't do what he did. So it's uh, trapping is just everything. By April, the long Alaskan winter begins to fade. The days grow long. The air is fresh and mild. Spring returns to the North Country. Villagers all across the North head out to their traditional spring camps to harvest beaver, whitefish, birds, and muskrat. Here on the Yukon Flats, north of Fort Yukon, a return to spring muskrat camp provides a chance to be out on the land in a small income from muskrat skins. But more importantly, it provides a welcome supply of muskrat meat, a nutritious traditional food. It's part of my diet, okay? I have to be out here because on the early basis, whether I'm doing for fur or not, I have to have that meat. I gotta eat that meat. If I don't eat that meat, then I have something missing in my diet. But, uh, my body kind of urge for it. So if I eat uh, few, I'm good till next year. 
I think I've done it every year. Uh, only time I uh, didn't come out here was when I was in the city or work that uh, doesn't allow me to come out here. But I still make it a point, whether if I'm out here or not, to line up some people that are trapping to uh, uh, trade with me uh, in return for for uh, whatever purpose. I might give them sugar, flour, tea, or whatever it is, and then in return they would give me uh, five muskrats, six muskrat, just a meat, just to taste it, and that I'm satisfied for another year, okay? Yeah. This remote area of lakes north of the Arctic Circle is muskrat country. Each year, muskrats build thousands of tiny houses on the shallow frozen lakes. As lakes become ice-free in late May, muskrats will be hunted from lightweight canvas canoes. But for now, they are trapped out on the ice. Active trappers cover a wide area, visiting many muskrat houses. Between trips to check the muskrat traps, many activities fill the days at spring camp. I'm just putting a stop on it just in case. So. Good idea. The long days of checking sets Caring for the muskrat skins and meat is work that has many quiet rewards. Every day I go around these lakes, go to the next lake, go to the following lake, and we go, it, make a round trip of about 20 miles a day at least. You see in the waterways around here? And we travel, we travel from about two in the afternoon until about 10 or 11 o'clock in the evening. And that's our work hours. And then once we get back around 11 or 12 at night, then we have to sit down and whatever we brought back, we have to skin them out and take care of the meat, take care of the skin, stretch them out. Before you stretch them out, you have other skins on that uh, stretchers that are needing to be handled too. So you take care of those, you process those, and then you get... So actually, it, it's, a, it's a lot of work, and yet it uh, maintains your uh, mentality, okay? It maintains your... Uh, physically, you're mentally awake and aware of everything that's going on around you when you're in the setting we are right now. Meat from muskrat can be boiled, roasted, or dried for future use. Meat from this day's catch provides the day's main meal. The skin of each muskrat brings only two or three dollars, but a trapper in good muskrat country may reach 1,000 skins. It's the cash on the other end, okay? How much cash can I get for it? How much cash am I making? How much am I making for my work? If we had 1,000 muskrat, we have $2,500. And if that's a month's work or three months' work, that's still uh, a good wages. If you really work at it, money means that we can get back out here again and do it again and again. Looking to the future, 
village trappers are hopeful that traditional ways, traditional knowledge, and respect for the land and animals will serve the generations to come. What skills that were handed down, I think those skills, if we were to uh, keep uh, teaching young people about these skills and uh, about the environment and how to keep it clean, how to keep everything else uh, in order and without disturbing it, I think that it'll be, whether it's years ago or 50 years from now, it'll still be the same, yes. My heart and soul and body and mind absolutely exist out here. <laughs>